When studying the cat's circulatory system, it's best to break it down into four parts. Actually, five if you include the heart itself. Um, do the upper vein system, then the upper artery system, then the lower vein system, then the lower artery system. That way you don't get confused because there are a lot of different uh, blood vessels going all over the place and it's easy to get confused that way. And what I like to do is I like to start by actually looking at from the heart and working your way up. Now if you take a look at the vein system going up, there is one tube that comes out of the heart, or actually leads into the heart I should say, uh, but it is one main tube going that way. That main tube goes up and there is actually one that runs down as well. This is the superior vena cava. You'll also hear it referred to as the anterior vena cava. I'll use the superior vena cava. There is one tube for that and what that does is it will actually work its way and specialize to the head as well as arms. So this is one long tube, the superior vena cava. You'll notice that there's actually a little peg coming off of that. And what that is, is it will lead to, it'll actually branch into two and lead to the internal mammary veins. Now the superior vena cava is going to branch. Uh, I should point out we can also see along the way we can see an azygous vein right here on the side. And I'll be zooming in a little bit closer so you can see um, even better detail some of these smaller veins off of there. Now, the superior vena cable will actually be branching into two. Now, this will specialize going to the head and to the arms on either side. So, because it leads to both, it is not specialized yet, we give it the term brachiocephalic. Brachial referring to the arm, cephalic, of course, meaning relating to the head. So, this is going to be the cat's left, so it's the left uh, brachiocephalic, and this is the right brachiocephalic. Now at this point it's going to uh, branch off to about here and then it will specialize going up to the neck on either side. Once it's specialized or broken off, then we will give it its specific names going off to the head. Um, and I'll work with that first. We'll be taking a look if I slide the cat down a little bit. You can see on both sides that this vein will go all the way up. There is actually a smaller one. It was actually uh, cut away on on this cat uh, when they were doing the preserving process. This is the internal jugular vein. We also have the external jugular. External jugular is pretty easy to see. It's really big. Um, it's easy one to see on humans as well. On this side it's been cut because they were doing, uh, they have to cut it to do the preserving process. You'll see some string tying that together. But this would be the external jugular vein. Off of the external jugular vein, you'll see that there is a branch that will lead to the top of the scapula. Now, it's important to keep in mind where we are in the body, what the skeleton is underneath, because a lot of these veins and arteries are named after those. So since this one goes to the top of the scapula, we call this one the transverse scapular vein. Now, if we keep following up, what we're going to see is that this external jugular is actually going to cross to the other external jugular, just where uh, the voice box or larynx would be. This is called the transverse jugular vein. We follow up a little bit further, you'll notice our friends, the digestive glands, we've got lymph nodes, we've got submandibular, sublingual, all of those things that we used as a landmark uh, with this vein. Uh, now we're going to be actually naming them, naming them. We have the transverse jugular. Then after the transverse jugular, it'll branch off into the anterior facial and posterior facial right here. So that's what that landmark was along the way, and it'll actually branch even further. Um, you're going to have mandibular and lingual and things like that, but for our purposes, we don't need to know those. Just that we've got transverse, anterior facial, posterior facial, and we'll just leave it at that. Now if I work our way down to the arm now, You'll see that it will actually be on both sides. I'll be moving over, when we get over to here, I'll be moving over to the right arm. But for now, we're going to go to the left arm. The brachiocephalic is actually going to uh, branch off, as I said. And then once we get past where the uh, external jugular is, this is going to make a small division before it goes down to this vein that branches off. This one will actually go deep to the scapula again. So the branch that will go from here to here, just this little tiny division right here, this is what we call, because it goes underneath the clavicle itself, this is called the subclavian. It goes beneath the clavicle. Again, the term is subclavian. 
After, at the end of the subclavian, what we're going to find is that this will actually go down and it's going to go really deep to the underside of the scapula. If you follow this one, it'll go to the underside of that shoulder blade that called the scapula. So this is called the subscapular. Don't confuse it with the one coming off of the external jugular. That is the transverse scapular. Now if you know where that subscapular is, then you'll see that this vein will actually go all the way, it'll make a long stretch from here to here, and it runs out of its color at this point on this cat. But you can see a little branch coming off, and what this is, this long branch after the subscapular going to this little branch going to the top part of the humerus, this is, or I'm sorry, this is this uh, anterior humeral circumflex right here. So the, the division right from here to here is going to be the axillary. Here is the anterior humeral circumflex. If I can pull that out, here it is right here. Again, it's lost some of its color, but you can see it goes to the underside and what it's doing is it's going to the head of the humerus, which would be right here. Okay, So this little vein that comes off is called the anterior humeral circumflex. It goes around, make a, makes a circumference around the humerus, and it's on the anterior side. It'll actually go all the way around. So this is the anterior humor, uh, humeral circumflex. After that point, what it's going to do is this vein is going to go all the way down to the elbow. Let me switch over to the cat's right hand side so we can see that a little bit better. Okay, the circumflex is actually cut away here, but we can see from here to here, this is all brachial. Okay, so after that circumflex division, then we're going to see the brachial, and then it'll split into two. We've got the pinky side right here, and we've got the thumb side right here. The pinky side is going to be the ulnar, and the thumb side is going to be radial. So the brachial will branch off into the radial as well as the ulnar divisions.